Speedrunning is a fascinating part of the game. You might think you know all there is to any one of your favourite games, only to see someone completely obliterate your favourite games in a fraction of the time it would take you. It's undoubtedly one of the coolest parts of gaming. But what if you combine speedrunning with a game that's obsessed with speed? Join me for the hours of theory crafting that led to one of the most challenging speedruns for a single level of a game I've ever done. Welcome to Sonic Frontiers. But before we dive into my speedrunning attempts, we need a bit of background on the game we'll be working with. Sonic Frontiers is caught gameplay split into two distinct sections, Open Zone and Cyberspace. Open Zone speedrunning involves propelling Sonic into places he's not supposed to be, to trigger events earlier in the story than intended while cyberspace speedrunning involves manipulating the stage design of cyberspace to propel Sonic to the end of levels, usually skipping huge parts of levels and leading. We're going to be focusing on cyberspace, specifically Cyberspace Zone 2-6, which is based on Sonic Adventure 2 Skyrail, a stage with a very diverse level design split between horizontal and vertical platforming. If any stage would be a fun and interesting cyberspace level to speedrun, it would be this one. The level goes as follows. You start off on these rails and continue up this path to the right. After platforming up the side, you can either go down the optional route to the left, or continue to the right towards the main path. Up this spring is another set of rails, which propels you around this sky island and onto another set of rails, around even more sky islands, and then onto the mainland. This is the biggest piece of vertical platforming in the level, allowing the player to either proceed left through a bunch of springs and pulleys to get to the top, or to the right, with less pulleys and less springs, with a greater vertical ascension speed. Optimizing this section in particular will be the key to getting a better time in the speedrun. From here, we continue down these rails, all the way down to this skyland, which serves as our last real challenge. From here, Sonic can take these rails to get to the final skyland, from which it's pretty much a straightforward dash to the end. Simple, right? Well, it should be. Enter our integral piece of speedrunning tech, the homing dash, also known by the community as hitting the gritty. This technique works by converting Sonic's homing attack momentum into boost momentum, sending Sonic rocketing forward at breakneck speeds in whichever direction the homing attack E was to Sonic's initial boost position. This technique is incredibly powerful for speedrunning, allowing the player to skip huge chunks of levels in no time. The only real problem with this technique is the setup, which you may have figured out by now requires a target to homing attack. This could severely limit how we tackle these runs, that is if we don't think creatively with our options, but more on that later. Now I think it's finally time to set the scene for our first time speedrunning. I was beginning to record the next part of my Sonic Frontiers Let's Play, starting the episode off with a cyberspace level. This was 2-6, and I was pretty damn excited to play through it. The open-ended nature of its platforming segments and set pieces made me wonder about just how fast I could complete this level, and just as my curiosity turned to determination, so did my Let's Play turn into day one of my speedrunning journey. My opening runs mainly consisted of getting to grips of the level. This means getting to know which part of the level goes where, how invisible walls impact big skips, and theory crafting as to how I could get faster. I started with some simpler skips, such as jumping between these rails to skip this sky island, as well as utilising the homing dash for the first time, using these buzz bombers to skip most of the rails during this initial section. Using this homing dash, I was able to access the faster of the two ascension methods of the main sky island and make it to the top, or at least I would have done had it not been for my curiosity. Remember this bit for later. 
Since I was getting to the end of the level consistently by this point, I decided to explore the level for some more homing dash points, to which the victor goes the spoils. And with that, my initial run was set. Use the right hand side pathway to ascend the first part of the level, hop across these rails and use the upper buzz bomber to homing dash to the better path of the Sky Island. Then I use these new homing dash points to secure the run. Oh my god, I actually made it! No way! We almost just got a sub-minute! We almost just got a sub-minute! <laughs> Doing all these, I clocked in on a sweet and spicy 1 minute 5. An admirable effort, and a sharp 15 second improvement over my other times. But I wanted more. I wanted a sub-minute time. So I got to optimizing. First was the initial ascent. This right pathway here. Once you hit this spring here, I determined that if you air boost here to hit the floor just before you use the next spring, you'll maintain your ability to air boost, allowing for this spring to be used with two homing attacks and an air boost, which gets us in place for an interesting use of the homing attack lock-on, a technique I call the Instaglider. During my numerous runs, I realized that, for whatever reason, the homing attack reticle would target the jet glider off-screen before targeting the spring in front of me. Due to the homing attack only really working if you're directly facing the recipient of an attack, this would provide a slight time save when placed in cyberspace stages with restrictive camera angles. But this still wasn't fast enough. Shaving off a few milliseconds wouldn't help us overcome that 5 second gap between us and a sub minute run, especially with how long it takes for the glider to actually work. Here enters everyone's favourite move, the homing dash. I realised that the glider in the spring could be used to homing dash, and due to the next part of the level being downhill, logic would dictate that I would actually be able to homing dash directly onto the next part of the stage. Doing this would completely negate the time loss of the glider, and would set us within a grasp of a sub minute time. But doing so would take a lot of work. But with enough practice, it eventually began to pay off. And while focusing on this trick, I found two other time saves. The first is on the initial rail descent, where Sonic can actually jump between the rails to bypass the springs at the end and save a bit of time. Nice! The second, however, is a lot more substantial. Remember that weird homing dash off the side of the vertical island before? Well, we're doing that. With it, we can skip pretty much the entire big vertical island and go straight into the rail section. But doing this would require a lot of practice. I did manage to do it a few times, but the nerves just kept on getting to me. So off to practice I go again. I should say, during this practice period I started to get a little bit bored and started to jump between these two rails at the beginning as a way to keep my fingers moving. But when I did, something really unexpected happened. Uh, take a look at this, uh, side by side between jumping and not. Turns out jumping between rails during this section gives Sonic more speed. I'm pretty sure it's something to do with how Sonic's rail switch momentum meshes with his downward slope momentum, creating a faster downward speed. But hey, it works. And by this point in my attempts for this run, I think I started to lose it a bit. 
Huh. Why? <laughs> what? God damn it! God damn it! God damn it! God damn it! Hey guys, have you ever heard the definition of insanity? I mean, you wouldn't find me being the captain of a group of pirates, but I've been sat there for at least two hours by this point, and I felt like I was making no progress whatsoever. But little did I know, after another half hour, a miracle would happen. Oh my god, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Please. Let me have this. Yes! Come on! Some minute! Some minute! Come on! Yes! 52.74. I had completely annihilated my previous best and finally achieved my sub minute time. To any sane person, this would be the end of trying. I'd gotten the time I wanted. But unfortunately, I'm not what you'd call a sane person. I wanted more. I got so close to a sub 50 second time and my run had so many flaws. There had to be a better way to do it. And so I sat there for another two hours with no progress whatsoever. I was beat. I had achieved what I set out to do, but my hubris, it had led me to fail even in my success. I was defeated. And that's where the speedrun laid for two weeks. Until one fateful day, I picked up the PS5 version of Sonic Frontiers and stopped running again. During this period, I completely disassembled my previous run, and started crafting new speedrunning methods that would surely obliterate my previous time. Cyberspace may have won the battle, but I would surely win the war. And after another four hours of speedrunning on the PS5 version of the game, I returned to the PC version, armed with knowledge and hope that I could defeat Cyberspace 2.6. Let's go through this from the top one last time. We start off on the rails and switch between them to build up speed. Here's where our first change comes into play. Remember that method that we used to climb the right hand side of the section? Uh, well how about we just, you know, uh, skip that. Using an upwards facing homing dash by jumping off the beginning of the rail, we can actually fly past the entire opening section of the run and land on these rails, where we can then homing dash again from this spring and fly towards the island to our left, skirting around the invisible wall to our right. This is where we reach potentially the biggest skip of the run. A skip that I've dubbed Waterfall Skip. Waterfall Skip works entirely because of how this cyberspace level is designed. Essentially, the rails we use to get to the end of the level from our last route are positioned directly behind this waterfall. If I could reach these rails, I could get a sub 50 second time. But that is a huge if. I didn't even know if this was possible. Until... I did this. This homing dash pretty much sold the idea that this was possible, but its difficulty due to the camera angle and homing dash angle made it incredibly tricky to reach the rails every time. I need to find a consistent setup to make this potentially run-saving homing dash work. And here comes my final speedrunning technique for the run, the spring trap. While no, this technique doesn't kill kids like another spring bunny we all know and tolerate, it provides us a stable way of setting up for our upwards homing dash, using this spring's launch to pretty much trap us in place for the next spot to homing dash. From here, we can then homing dash on this spring and weave around the waterfall, fighting the camera as we go. 
After the spring trap, the run would be the same as before, so all that was standing between me and that sub 50 second time was myself and the spring trap. And after only 20 minutes of trying, something incredible happened. It was possible. And this run was it. Or at least, it could have been. This could have been my final attempt. But one error changed everything. Sure, I got my sub 50 second time, but I could do better. I knew I could. I fell victim to my hubris weeks prior to this very moment. Would I really make the same mistake? Hell no I wouldn't, because now I was built different. Run after run after run, the spring trap became easy to perform, and each failure motivated me to get better and better, until finally, I did something incredible. This was the run. Oh, that was a wonderful start, huh? Excellent. That's a tremendous help. So was that actually? Holy crap! I just gotta not fail this. Oh my god! Oh my god! This could be it. This is it. This is it. Yes! Oh my god! And just like that, I'd won. After hundreds of deaths, countless hours of practice, and dozens of questionable life choices, I had finally triumphed over Cyberspace 26 and set a personal bet that I was truly proud of. I never thought speedrunning could be such a journey, but after this experience, I wouldn't mind doing it all over again. For comparison's sake, he has all my personal best times compared to each other, from humble beginnings to the final frontiers. Thank you all so much for watching this video. It took a long while to make, so if you enjoyed it, drop me a like or subscribe if you want more. That's all from me, and I hope you have a good one. Poppy out! <laughs>